one Mr. Ashok Srivastava is giving a talk. He is retired as vice president of Procter and Gamble in Bombay, manufacturing vice president. So he'll have an interactive session. Okay, shall we start? All right. Uh, tell me, Saloni, have you read this short case? Huh? Just tell me in summary about this Disney. Yeah. Uh, how they are recruited, how they are being trained, like they are being treated just like a, uh, not as a workers but as a cast members, how they have to treat their uh, customers, not be, not mentioning them as customers but as guests mm. and uh, they have been given training about how to deal with customers very friendly okay. and uh, uh, so that in Disney world they won't, the customer won't get any problem and also it's emphasis on that the uh, Employees are being also rewarded, and they have been proper checked of their performance measurement. They have to. They so there's a lot of training, on. rewards, and so on. Yes, okay. Sir. Now let me ask you: uh, What is the business of Disney? Uh, as they stated, their business is to uh, entertain people, to give them. Uh, are they in the show business? Emotional. What is the vacation business or the resort business? What are they? Sell emotion. They are in the emotion business. Yes. Huh? So what, what, what is, is their mission? Kalyan Disney, we are discussing. Have you read the case? So what is the mission of Disney? What is their business? Someone said they sell emotions. So they are into the entertainment industry, but their vision is to give emotional experience to the... So they are definitely not into vacation resorts? No. 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 They are in entertainment industry. All right. Okay. Now, it says here, Disney is in the business of providing emotional experiences. All right. Now, what kind of emotional experiences? Excuse me, we cannot say it's not a vacation resort. No. Spot for children's and adults. Like Where is it written? Read it out. In the talk, Disney World has always remained a vacation spot for children and adults alike. Yeah. The then, after that, what does it say? Have they defined their business as a vacation spot? No, so they have not defined it, but it's more than a vacation spot. It's, it's more, more, than more, than more, than more than a vacation spot. What is that more? Emotional experience. Yeah, that is, that is much more, no? Isn't it? Than a resort. So it's a highly specialized type of business that they're in and they've defined that. So what are these emotional experiences that they sell? Pleasure, delight, adventure, excitement, even fear. Okay. Now if that is their mission, then what sort of strategy they have to evolve to run their business successfully? Hmm? So the interaction with the customers or the guests, yeah, that is, let us hear him, he is a, he's a thinker basically, he does not talk much, tell me. Strategy, hmm. uh, yes, strategy is you are the organizational structures so that uh, they can implement their… So they must uh, have good organization structure, that is what you are saying, alright. So that they can uh, implement their strategy. Yeah. So that they can implement, that is you are saying unless they have a good structure, they cannot do the next thing, that is implementing strategy. Okay. So what is the strategy then? Strategy is to make systems, structure, all right, design the whole organization in such a manner that it fulfills their strategic goal, that is to continue to provide emotional experiences, all right, which gives joy and fear and delight and excitement and adventure and so on. Okay. So how have they gone about, how have they gone about in seeing that this strategy to fulfill the mission? Broadly how have they gone? Does it say anything about the structure, organization structure? It appears they have not put much thought on the structure. Well, let's hear. Let's let's argue this out. There doesn't seem to be any evidence about the structure. Not that, not 
That is not to say they do not have a structure. We know that they have 33,000 uh, employees and in the magic park which is one of the key to this excitement provi provider they have about 10,000 more than 10,000 employees. But does it say how many departments they have, how many levels of reporting, huh? the formalization, has they said anything about the departments? Yes, they have. No? Huh? What does it say? They call it discipline. What does it say? Safety, courtesy, show and efficiency. In a sense, are they not departments? Because what is the formalization process which we learnt last semester? Why do you divisionalize or departmentalize? You try and have similar jobs specialized so that you get more efficient performance of the job. So, it seems safety, courtesy. So, are these departments? Not departments. <laughs> All right, good. I accept that. So, it is not a department. All right, good. So, they have not said anything about really the structure. They have various roles, but they do not have jobs. That means they are like actors, they are a cast, they have a special vocabulary too, do not they? So, so again we are coming to today, what we are trying to discuss today is having made a strategy, hmm, how do you manage strategic change, how do you manage that? or having established the strategy, how do you perpetuate the strategy to see that your objectives and goals are continued to be fulfilled. Of course, you cannot do it in perpetuity because the environment keeps changing, you have to keep making adjustments in your strategy also. But the burden of today's discussion is that if you have one pillar of a strategic management plan which is a structure. We have dealt a lot in the structure, is not it? We said according to the type of business that you define yourself to be in, it is important for you to provide a structure which will facilitate your performance towards your goal. So, that is important. But today, reading this case and the next case too, we come across apart from the structure, there is something called organization design. You have to design it by what some systems, procedures, okay, ways of working and these are as important if not more important than the structure to see that you implement your strategy. So, the broad heading <coughs> is strategy implementation, make a plan that is all very well, you have done excellent job. You have your vision, you have your mission, you made a strategic plan, you know the goal you want to reach. How to reach it is the implementation of the strategy. And in implementing the strategy, managing strategic change is very important and you manage it basically by having some sort of systems, procedures all right, and ways of working by which you can efficiently manage. All right implementation. Okay. Coming back to uh, this case here, what do you think are the systems and procedures that they have, that they have put in place having defined the mission? So, one of the systems is recruitment of people. Have they done anything special there? So, anyone who is not attractive or good looking or smart, they do not recruit them. Is that right? Means they do not recruit by merit, they recruit by looks, good grooming. So, none of us, maybe only a few would have been recruited by Disney's. Uh, would we shout foul and say unfair? 
the kind of business they are in, all right, it's not unethical. For instance, if you are recruiting a military police, you know, they have a rule, they have to be minimum six foot height, otherwise you cannot. Now, I don't know whether if someone makes a uh, litigation in the court, whether it will be upheld or not as discrimination, but anyway, for our purpose, they have defined a policy of recruitment where they have said very clearly that we are limiting our recruitment to those who are attractive, right? Well groomed. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you talking to me? Are you saying something? No. Well groomed and they like working with people. Remember it mentions that. Interacting all the time. They want people of that type. So that's their recruitment. And do you think that is helping them towards their objective? Why? What has, what has that got to do with selling emotional experiences? What's the connection? Right. So who are coming? You have nearly one billion visitors who visit that magic park at Orlando. One billion. Is it 23 million? Huh? 23 million. That means one billion is the amount of money they make. All right. 23 million means nearly 2 million a month. That means every day, how many thousand are visiting? It's mind-boggling. 10,000 people in that park. So it's, it's some, it's some feat, no, to manage and when people come, all right, they are interacting with them all the time. So therefore, they want people who are attractive, well-groomed, who like interacting with people. Okay. What else? Have they provided any other kind of policy? The training, huh? the training and the socialization, which emphasizes on mainly on the people-to-people -people relationships and how they have to present themselves across. That's hmm. the main emphasis that they have laid. Hmm. Because ultimately, it's all an entertainment industry and you have to entertain the customer or the guest as they put it across mm. when you come over here. Mm. And we should go back with a better experience. Sure. Right. Rather than a job, it is a role. You play a role. You have guests, you don't have customers. Yeah. Right? You play <coughs> roles. Right? You don't do a job. You wear costumes. You don't wear uniforms. And what else? Your cast members. Yeah? Not cast, but cast. C A S T. All right. What else? What about the physical environment that they have provided? After all, they are selling you emotional experiences, no? See, romance, for instance, if it is emotional, you want to sell that. What do you do? You create moonlight. All right? You create romantic surroundings. So, aren't the physical facilities important? Yes. See, after all, if you are putting on a show, don't you have to have sets? Huh? So, what have they done? Most fantastic kind of sets they provide, no? They have created the Amazon, the dinosaur park. What else? Bottom of the sea, Grand Canyon. So, all this is tying in with their strategy all right, of selling, selling emotional experiences. Now, hiring people, spending money, investing and setting up these facilities is good. But interacting with people, that is the tough part of it and particularly 10,000 people. Even if one of those 10,000 does not behave well with one guest also, what do you think will be the cascading effect of that? You have one dissatisfied guest, unhappy, goes away and he's from India particularly. He has gone to Orlando. All Indians go there. That's the destination if you're on the East Coast. And he says, I have heard so much about it, but see, I asked someone, I was lost, and he didn't reply to me. Just didn't care. So you, you tell all your friends. And what happens? Bad news spreads very fast. If you do good things, they don't spread so fast. So, how are you going to manage? It's really mind-boggling when you think about it. How they have managed to create 
a training system all right to create that culture because at the end of the case they say that they don't pay more than other people in that region they pay about the same so it's not money that makes people come there but what people say that they learn it's fun first it's fun to be there you wear costumes you're on a show it's fun and you learn a lot of things which last you a lifetime isn't it hmm. special skills you learn and people skills so let's look at a few slides and see how managing strategic change all right relates to this case all right organization design structure and strategy okay what drives what the structure drives strategy or strategy drives structure strategy drives structure sure about it he says both that's the way it should be that's the way it should be how do you say both how does structure drive a strategy say i make a bureaucratic structure then what strategy am i driving which is the horse and which is the cart bureaucracy is the cart is the horse so you decide that you are in the business of being bureaucratic then you create a structure to suit that what happens in real life say we had a green field we are setting up a company few of us here and we say we are in the business of doing x y z that's our business we define our business how do we make our structure based on resources so the structure has yet to come right we are three promoters let us say four promoters we decide a business and the business decides on the mission so structure will follow that so do you agree that your strategy will usually drive your structure unless unless what unless you buy a company all right you have inherited a legacy you have a structure if you are starting a fresh you have no baggage you have a clean slate if you are starting a fresh you can design what you want there you have to take the structure that you already have into consideration you cannot just destroy the structure okay do you agree with what he is saying because these are the practicalities of real business life is it not so what are we coming to the conclusion that finally a structure is never ideal all right you can approach a kind of structure which will more or less support the kind of strategy that you have to fulfill your goals but will never be ideal so it has to be supplemented it's important but you can't get an ideal structure all the time so you have to supplement it supplemented by systems procedures so that within the structure even though it's not too good it's not the best you can still deliver the outcome in a very optimal kind of way ha huh? so the vision mission objectives goals of the organization determine the structure and strategy i put purposely for this discussion instead of saying strategy and structure right a well designed structure helps the strategy implementation we all agree as a tailor made structure design can support strategy implementation but but only a good organization design is not support not good for strategy implementation as the people in the organization have to perform in an efficient and coordinated fashion for effective implementation of the strategy 
So we are coming to people. And in the case that we have just been talking about, Disney's, I think they have identified very, very clearly that their business stands or falls on the people. Because in the business they are in, with having so many millions of people coming and paying good money, cash also, no accounts receivable, right across, you go buy your ticket. <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's the best kind of business. Immediately you get cash. So they, the people are what they have to focus on and they are highly focused on it. Additional mechanisms have to be provided to ensure effective strategy implementation. These mechanisms are vital links which interconnect people and information and other components of organization design. Okay? Right. So tell me what kind of linkages you find from this case. Hmm? These mechanisms are vital links which interconnect people and information. They have talked of five mechanisms here. Am I right? One is recruitment. What else? Socializing. Then training. Measurement of performance. And rewards. So this is what they have identified. That if you are in the people business, these are your focus areas to see that the people deliver. It says somewhere that they spend considerable amount of time huh, in doing what? In changing, influencing employee behavior. Training is a tool, but what are they aiming at? Disney exerts deliberate effort to control and influence right, employee behavior. That's a stated objective. Anyone who joins, you control their behavior, all right, and you influence them. That is very, very vital for their operations. What is a networked organization? Have you heard of this concept? Network means everyone knows everyone, they keep talking on the telephone, whole day, network, networked organization. All the components of the organization are welding, so that… All the components are? Welding, so that… Welding. Welding. Welding, all right. So that uh, changes can be implemented easily and everything can be monitored easily. Hmm. Any other understanding of… Networked organization. Every level is in touch. There is department head stock often. Is that the thing? Then? Information flow. Information flow is not limited to one department only and is not vertical, going from top to bottom only, but is lateral also. Okay, that's. That's yes, that's one way of networking. What else? Blend of both vertical and horizontal. Okay. Hmm. The network organization uses a body of organizational practices to fine tune the organization strategy implementation. These organizations attempt to combine both stability and flexibility in their operations through less reliance on traditional organization design. So what we are just discussing, these are not traditional. Traditional is departmentalization, isn't it? Through proper channel, the bureaucratic design. So these are attempt to have flexibility. Why flexibility? To respond to changes faster. In order to respond faster and in order to implement faster. So they are looking for a combination of flexibility as well as stability. What do they mean by stability? Say, I say, why not make it fully flexible? Then you are nimble, agile, any changes in the environment, you can immediately 
respond to it? Why not that way? Why bring in stability in the first place? Just flexibility. Why? Why? Flexibility, I am giving you flexibility. Stability is continuing, is to prevent chaos, is it not? Day to day, day to day, you have to have a base of operational rules, procedures and structure, is it not? Otherwise, you will go to chaos. So, you need stability and stability finally aimed at, is aimed at what? The bureaucratic organization. Is not it aimed at efficiency after all? Is not it? A rigid organization, bureaucratic, why do they make it rigid? They are not fools, they do it because you can have intense supervision, you can have intense control, measurement of each of the specialized work which is going on with the idea of having very, very efficient organizations or efficient departments. That is the idea. So, stability does that. So, major characteristics of network organizations is semi permeable boundaries, semi permeable. So, what does that mean? That means, it is not rigid. Semi permeable means something can filter through, do not have walls. Okay. Do we have kind of walls like that here in Vigisome? No? Everyone knows what is happening? Huh? I know which professor is teaching what. Similarly, all professors know what I am teaching. Is that so? How have we provided that? Is there any mechanism we use for that? Hmm? We do not use, no? So, we have walls. I am trying to establish that. Is it really dependent only on size? Yeah, partly I agree with you. After all, we are all there under the same roof. But is that enough? What about information flow? Isn't that important? Even if you have got 10, ten people, if there is no information flow, unless you have got mechanisms, you know, to have a minimum basic information flow, at least on topics which are important, all right then what is going to happen? You are not going to have successful operation. So, one example is a timetable. Timetable is an institution, no? So, at least each faculty member knows what his, what is his time slot for teaching and what are the other time slots. Ask if he did not know about it, could we be able to change our timing, say I want to take a special class, we cannot do it. If we do it, it will clash into something else. As it happened, it clashed into something yesterday, no? Dr. Jitu Singh's class clashed with Dr. Ghosh, I believe. Was it your first year or second year? Second year. Second year, all right. So, semi permeable means having a system and mechanisms which allow some amount of cross flow of information so that, you know, you have response and performance, which is more efficient, quicker information flow amongst departments. So, another major is alliance and partnering. It says you are dividing up the industry value chain. What is a value chain? You have, you have learned about value chain now. Tell me, who will tell me what is value chain? What is a value chain? Is it a chain? It is a chain. What is the material of the chain? Activity. So, it is a chain of activities, all right. So, how am I interested in this chain of activities? How is it linked to strategy? How does each activity add to the value? Give me an example. Let us say procurement. If I get good material, my end product is going to be good. Okay. I get it uh, cheap, I can sell it cheap and get uh, better margins or whatever, finally. So, procurement is one example, then second would be production. Production if I do efficiently, similarly other steps. 
So a chain automatically signifies the interdependence, okay, in a serial manner, one activity to the other activity, does it not? That is every link in the chain is linked together. So it is a chain which starts from the beginning of the activities of that organization till the end of the activities, that is a value chain. And it says here alliances and partnering, it says dividing up the industry value chain. What does he mean by cut the chain, then how are you going to do your operations? What does he mean by dividing it up? Example? Let us take a few link, say supplier is one link, all right. Then production is another link. So, you divide them up, I thought you should integrate them. Okay. In any case, they are outsourcing. 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 Right. You have make by decisions, isn't it? Things which are not in your area of core competency because it is let us say it is quite simple to do, you need not do it. You have specialist vendors who can do it at a cost which is lower than the cost at which you can do it and also they have got the expertise to do it okay, under some supervision, your quality requirements and so on. It is cheaper for you to divide that value chain. Instead of having a fabrication shop, let us say providing the fabrication to the assembly shop you can have the fabrication vendor and the people who have deployed there, they can rather be trained for assembly. So that once it comes in, in one fell swoop, that space you have of the shop, the people, all right, you get rid of the machines, sell them, make, make a little money and make the people into assemblers now after due training. So you are dividing the value chain essentially. So, Major character networked is there. Now, now you understand how you what you mean by networking. Networking is A within your organization, that is less compartmentalized organizational design. So, you network between or intra organization and then you move further afield and you network inter organization also. Okay. Partnering, alliances and partnering, what is the connotation? A supplier is a partner in a sense, but do you think a, a competitor can be a partner? Can be? Technology partner, why should he give you a techno his technology to you? He will guard it zealously. He would? Yes. So the various companies and industry like come together to put funds for our Okay. Yes. A industry association. So, you obtain by going for joint ventures. Right. Right. All right. Some components which are manufactured, you know, particularly electronic industry, you find the example. If you have people, you know, in Southeast Asia who are low cost, high quality manufacturers of components and intermediaries you know, for your final product. You need not try and make it or source it. In your own country, you can rather get it, you enter into a partnership. Right. And the last is focus on core processes and technologies. Specialization along a core activity and redefining ways to create value in core activity. Hmm? Is this self-evident? What did Westinghouse do? Let us come to Westinghouse. What they following these, uh, these principles here? Specializing along a core activity? Huh, they were. So, we are shifting activity to Westinghouse now from Disney. We will come back to Disney again. How was Westinghouse? What was their strategy? And what was their mission? How did they define themselves? 
is it self evident from this little case what was westinghouse vision and mission were they were they in the industrial sector Huh? Or they or were they in the home appliances sector? Were they in the entertainment like Disney's? Huh? They are in everything. That is their mission. We will do everything. Huh? Anything that makes money. Did they end up making money? No. They did not. What happened? They became extinct like the dinosaurs. people of my generation all right who did electrical engineering westinghouse was a force to reckon with in our time ha huh? it was a fantastic it was a pioneer of power equipment power plants and all westinghouse there is a point being made in the case i don't know whether you have noticed it says even after 20 years that they discontinued making home appliances people were still familiar you know like a westing house refrigerator even in india what does they say about his brand equity massive brand equity had quality reliable what did they do with it they frittered it away right here are people spending perpetually huge amount of money in not only creating a brand equity but sustaining it because you have to sustain a brand equity and we have westinghouse at one time a 9 billion dollar corporation in those days i'm talking of 40 years ago the biggest corporation general water was only 45 billion not not like now so 9 billion was a very big organization and a very respected organization it was a pioneer in the engineering and power plant area at that time they also went in to something quite different they went into home appliances household they made a success of it there also so a powerful company like that which could handle a portfolio of product at diverse as power plants and home appliances office furniture ha huh? it died at an early age of about 50 or so killed itself it's a very interesting case why did that happen you know there was a era in the 70s there was a era of the conglomerates have you have you been taught about that we did cases like litton industries those were the days of conglomerates you just bought organization gobble them up and grew and grew and grew and grew so it was this same philosophy anything that you can make money on just get into that business it happened in india too the malia group the rpg group okay they, they they also but now then what happened now there seems to be a cyclic change ha huh? the concept seems to have changed they say you go back to core competence hmm focus core competence so if you have to do an mba focus on what is mba score competence what is an mba or mbm score competence tell me your learning strategy what is mbm's core competence is it computers no. systems marketing finance ha huh? what is your core competence management ha huh? management management so what are mbas they are all specialists some specialist or the other hmm yes they are specialist or no yes generalist see people are confused we must clear our own thoughts before we proceed mbas yes nitya ji what are what are we are we are we generalist specialist what are we if i submit to you that we are specialists but specialist in a special thing all right and that special is your expertise is how to manage businesses any business 
whether it's the business, all right, of broadcasting entertainment, or it's in the business of building battleships and selling them, all right, you specialize in that business of managing any business because there are underlying core principles, isn't it, which are applicable in running organizations, whether profit or not for profit organizations. Anyone who disagrees raises your hand, then we will debate it. So, you are a conductor of an orchestra. You are not a specialist of trombone or kettle drums or clarinet. But without you, there would be cacophony that music will not come out. That is your expertise. You have the insights which are holistic. You understand the interdependence between all these functions which are so diverse and you understand clearly that there is a magic in how to make these diverse functions come together in congruence and deliver outcome uh, which is which is matching your strategy that is what you are. So, now what did Westinghouse, where did they go wrong? They were the first movers in every field. Why do you say that? Which field were the first movers? Surely they were not first movers in every field. Yeah, they pioneered power plants, no doubt. It was their, let us hear this for a moment. It was their inability to compete effectively against more focused competitors. Why? Why? If you focus more, what is that that you gain? Special knowledge uh, and that special knowledge helps you to do what? Cost. I was, I was waiting for people to say that. As businessmen, remember, costs are very, very important. At all times, you should try to be the cost leader. Quality is a given. Without quality, you might as well close your shop, go home, do not be in business but not quality at any cost. That is what differentiates the, the, the good people, you know, in industry from the not so good people. Quality at a very acceptable cost. And so, what happened? The Japanese competition which came, right, it wiped out. What is the other learning point about strategy, implementation of strategy? Information, it is to do with information. Is it enough to, to have information? It is not enough to have information. The first step in the information game is what? To acquire the information, is not it? We will nimbly switch back to the Disney case. They wanted some vital information, they recognized it about compliments and complaints, right? And there are 10,000 people there in that park. How did they go about collecting that? What did they rely on? Did they have these managers roaming around every day in the park, eavesdropping? Is there a complaint or a compliment? No. Guest reports. They encourage, you know, customers. Yeah, writing. And then they had some people who collected those, collated, and then gave it to the manager. What else? They were acquiring information because it was vital. What else? What else? The industrial engineering, what did they do? Right. They continually, it was a continual basis. Those, those factors which could give customer delight or satisfaction were pinpointed. You do not want long queues, isn't it? to buy a ticket to get into a show in the park. So, study that. Are the queues becoming too long? What else? Quality. Is there any complaint about quality? As you are going through the Dinosaur Park, does the vehicle stop because it has run out of oil or fuel? By the way, have any, has any of you visited Disney? No. 
Okay. It's quite awesome, I can tell you. I mean, you can spend a whole week. It's massive. And um, all right, I won't, I won't steal his thunder. You go and see it for yourself. When you see it, you'll find. It's really awesome. And management of that, to be so efficient, is really, really, it takes a lot of skill. OK? So coming back then to information acquiring. Acquiring of information, and information is infinite. It is also an art and a skill. What is to identify? and focus on what is the information which is most vital to you. So, this prioritization has to be done depending on what business you are in. In our case, what is the information which is vital to us? VGSO. Hmm? Performance of the student. Is attendance a vital information? Are we collecting it? Yes. All professors are taking? Not all. So maybe we are failing there. Huh? <laughs> then they take random. Then they collate it, is it? <coughs> so coming back to it, first we acquire the information. But have you acquired having acquired, say I get all your attendance and then do nothing about it. Is that going to help you? In performing successfully, no. So, having acquired the information, you have to analyze it. And the next step is? Action. Act on it. Action. Okay. So, focusing on core process and technology, specialization along a core activity, redefining ways to create value in core activity. Westinghouse, the case says that there were three. I'm getting disturbed, you know. These people talking in the back there. Are you? Are you? Talk, what are you talking about? Share it with us. What were you talking about? Because there's a hum, you know, at the back, and it disturbs me. I'm sure it disturbs the others too. So please don't do it. Huh? Or I'll have to ask you to sit here, you know, from the next class. Huh. Now. So, there are some things mentioned which were the key critical factors which made Westinghouse become extinct, so to say. Because finally, in 1998, I think they changed their name and became CBS Corporation, okay? so, which is a totally different business and the whole character was changed. What are those three examples? Is there any learning point of failure of strategy implementation? Who will tell me point one? Yes? Did you read the case? No. You didn't read the case. Why? No time. So one is poorly managed organizational control systems. Poorly managed organizational control. Example? Uh, so they couldn't link up the different key amount. Unless you see the very good. They couldn't implement their managerial skills to the same level in each of the units which they were working. So some units uh, performed badly <coughs> and then finally they had to sell them away. They got some concentration. Uh, the same units mm -hmm. when sold to someone else, the, the same units were profitable performed. and successful. Whereas under, under the original vesting of management, right. it never went into profits and were never successful. That's, that was the reason why they had to divest it off. Let's take one case. Let's take the nuclear plants. What went wrong there? Yes, yes. Uh, amounts, but then when the prices rose, they were unable, unable to meet the demands. So why did they do that? I mean, everyone knows. That that's a, why did they do that? I mean, they were all <coughs> smart managers there also. What, why, what happened? They could not predict the okay. They could not predict? They could not predict. Long-term contracts you are taking, any one of us. Know that there is a risk. 
I think there was another explanation for it, lies elsewhere. You think there was a pressure to grow fast, show growth all the time? I think, I think I agree with him. Don't you get a feeling that the orientation for performance for managers was a very short term orientation, rapid growth, rapid expansion. That means the bottom line had to show very rapidly and there is always in every business there is a struggle between showing a good bottom line in the short run and making investments for long term sustainability of profits. Any investment you do, it will cut back on your immediate profit. I think it is quite evident to me, look at the financial sector business, what did they do? To whom did they advance money? Tell me. And who are those people to whom they gave loans? Who had been rejected by others. Right. You see, people who could not get loans from others because others thought that they were high risk. So they refused the loan. They finally ended up giving loans, and their portfolio 85 percent was such loans. Obviously, where the business plans were too risky, others were not advancing loans. They gave loans. What could be the reason for it? Personal incentive of the management there of that unit for short term. They want to show short term. So, if you if you neglect the long term and take high risks in the short run, right, you're doomed. This brings it out dramatically. The Westinghouse case, more dramatic because it was such a huge reputed organization failed. What about the other case, the automation, robotics, what happened there? Was it a good product when they bought Unimation, was it a good product? Product was good, they were selling to good clients. General Motors, Ford, I mean this is one industry, the automotive industry is a big buyer of robotics no? and they were selling to big daddy, GM, Ford. What went wrong there? Was it really wrong? I refuse to believe Westinghouse had stupid people there. They knew what is the problem. Quite right. What they what were they doing? It was leaking. They were selling oil because it was a proprietary oil with high margins. It must have been a proprietary oil for their robots. They were selling more and more oil, selling away their future for the immediate present gain. These are cultural issues. These are cultural issues. Huh? Culture is a very, very important component of strategy implementation to have strategic change. We will come to that after a five minutes break. Okay? Thank you.